Okay, so to show off this DS Wi-Fi example, I really had to get out the camcorder. And the uh, reason being that we're going to have two applications running, uh, one on the PC and one on the DS, and they're going to be interacting. So a simple screen capture wouldn't cut it. So I guess we're going to start on the PC end of things. So here you can see my desktop in OS X. It's my uh, Dexter Dexter mashup background. It's good stuff from somebody at worldwell.com. Pretty awesome. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and start up the NDS interface host application, which on the surface is a simple OpenGL and a SDL application. Now we had to do some some fancy programming to get this cube to do exactly what we wanted and it is now doing that nicely and it uh, rotates on the spot to drag across it as we expect so that is good. It's got some nonlinear dampening so it slows down real quick if you try to spin it too fast so it doesn't get too crazy but what this application is also doing is listening on a socket for incoming connections and we are going to provide it one from the NDS interface client application which is going to be running on the Nintendo DS so without any further hesitation we'll go ahead and show off that end of things so in order to use the DS I'm going to need both hands and so I'm going to have to film with my teeth so we'll see how this works out So I'm using the M3i adapter, which has a really nice user interface um, known as M3 Sakura. But unfortunately, M3 Sakura has really bad homebrew compatibility, which I hope they fix soon. So I had to boot it up in touch pod mode. Okay. So it is now getting a list of wireless access points. I'm going to add select mine and give it the information it needs. Okay, so our DS is now connected to our wireless access point and it has been given an IP address. So from here, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, connect to interface. And what that'll do is basically make a connection to the PC application, which has been waiting for something to come in on that socket. And um, once that's done, it'll kind of negotiate with the DS. Okay, so we are now connected to the PC application. Uh, it accepted the connection. The DS sent a register signal, and uh, 
The PC application responded with a signal port and a data port. The DSL used um, those values to open a signal port that it'll listen for messages from the PC on and um, it'll also pipe data across that UDP port to the PC. And so now we are connected to the PC application and it is piping data. And so not only can we now manipulate the cube with the mouse on the PC, but we can also use the touch screen on the DS to rotate the cube. So as we do this, it's just sending the input data from the touch screen over our LAN to our PC. So it's pretty neat. You can obviously go anywhere in your house where you still have a connection to your Wi-Fi and control this application on your PC.